WikiLeaks found that Julian Assange is a wanted man. But not just for leaking secret diplomatic cables. Interpol is after him for allegations of rape. But the 39-year-old Australian says the allegations are false and he's being persecuted. Here to fill me in on the latest is CNN correspondent Atika Schubert, who once interviewed the WikiLeaker himself, Julian Assange. Uh, what are the specifics of the allegation against uh, Assange? Well, we don't know the exact details. What we do know is that two women uh, basically brought these charges to police saying they suspected him of a, of a rape charge and a what there's in Sweden called a sexual molestation charge. It's, it's pretty much like harassment. Uh, and this whole case from the beginning was very strange. These, they brought these charges to police. They were filed. Uh, and then uh, the next day they were dropped by the prosecutor only yeah. to be resurrected weeks later. So the whole thing was very strange. Uh, Julian Assange himself says that he did have uh, consensual sexual relations with both women, but he says all of these uh, these sex crimes allegations are completely false, uh, and he doesn't really understand where this arrest warrant is coming from from Sweden, where this Interpol red notice is coming from, because he says he has offered himself up for questioning to the Swedish police and prosecutors numerous times uh -huh. and has been rejected every time. Well, the timing is very suspicious, don't you think? Yeah. Definitely. And, that, and his lawyers say the same thing. Okay. Um, why is Interpol... Why, okay, that's the answer to that question. Interpol is coming out now because something's going on where they just want his head. He's embarrassed a lot of people. It makes sense, doesn't it? He has embarrassed a lot of people, um, but it, it's, there's no clear connection at this point to the documents he puts out and these allegations that he's looking at in Sweden. Of course, there's a lot of suspicion, and because the case is very strange, he personally views it as an attack, not just on him, but on WikiLeaks as an organization. And uh -huh. he says security services have warned him a number of times that something like this may happen. Now, you, it's interesting. You sat down with uh, Assange, and he actually walked off when you asked him about his personal legal troubles. So he, he doesn't want to talk about it, I guess, with a reporter. But uh, tell me what your personal impressions were of him. Uh, this is somebody, he's, he's, he's a brilliant man, there's no doubt about that. Uh, his brain is working about uh, much faster, I would say, than most people's. He's very passionate, he's very idealistic, and he's not really trying to take down any particular government or organization, but he's just a true believer in this idea of freedom of information activism, that the more the public knows about how the, the governments and organizations and banks and so forth really work, shining a light on their inner workings, the better the the public will be and the better that these governments and organizations will perform and that's what he thinks he's doing by releasing this huge amount of material so he's very committed uh, yeah. very passionate about this idea and he's not going to be giving it up anytime soon right well it remains to be seen how dangerous all of this is at the end of the day but that's where he's coming from thanks very much atika now i want to bring in my panel call bernstein journalist and contributing editor at vanity fair magazine and michael hastings contributing editor to rolling stone and the author of i lost my love in baghdad uh carl interpol is going after this guy assange they're charging him with rape etc do you think that they're using this allegation as a way to nab him because they're really ticked off about what I, he's done i don't know the facts what do you think and, uh, no, no I, i'm not going there the one fact that i see is that one of the allegations is that a condom broke uh, in the midst of intercourse and that the woman told him to stop and he didn't and that that's one oh. of the allegations of rape. In the midst rape. of intercourse so, or interpol? So, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, important story. Yes, it is. And, and there is this sideshow as to whether or not he is uh, being prosecuted or persecuted, but the really important thing is that we not look at this huge trove of information through an ideological lens, that rather this is something that is important. It to goes to the issue of governments, yeah. it goes to the issue of newspapers and the press, it goes to the issue of uh, Fox News and so others. So do you think can, it, it's right, the right thing to have done on his part? Well, look, whistleblowers have their, their own intentions, always. I think it's the right thing for the New York Times to publish, for Spiegel mm -hmm. to publish, and it's the right thing for WikiLeaks to be responsible in the way they put this information out. Uh -huh. Make sure that it's redacted in a way that people's names, uh, that they're not in danger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Okay. Now, Michael Assange's lawyer says the alert is bizarre, irregular, and comparable to tactics used under Stalin. 
Right, and, and first I just want to thank you for having me on the show, and uh, it's an honor for me to be on the panel with a, a journalist uh, legend Carl. like uh, Carl Bernstein. Well, yeah, you it's, a hell it's, of a story this year. Well, so. thank, well, thank. The, the two of you are both <laughs> whistleblowers in many ways. And so, I, that's, well, I'm, we're journalists. Well, well, but, but, but both of you are famous for blowing a whistle on something. So, well, and, and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and Carl's been doing it for decades and, and really holding people to account. And, and in terms of the, the, so it's an honor to be here, but in terms of the uh, allegations, uh, in terms of what Assange's lawyer is saying, look, he, he's in a battle for his clients, really his clients' freedom. So I think we can excuse a little bit of the hyperbolic rhetoric, but there is something definitely unusual about the timing of the arrest warrant. And, uh, and if you look at these other factors, all the screws are being put to WikiLeaks right now and Julian Assange right now. Whether it's taking off um, the, uh, whether it's taking off uh, the, their server on Amazon.com, uh, or, or, or basically issuing what it seems like there's going to be an arrest warrant issued for him if he ever tried to return to the United States. All right, let, let me just ask you while I have you there. You, you exposed personal conversations between uh, General McChrystal in Afghanistan. It's similar in a certain way, right? These are personal conversations on the internet. Am it's I right? News. It's, it's all right. news. But that, you did that. Let's go you back, did that, let's go back Michael. to that. <laughs> okay, it's news. But Michael did that. And I would like to know from you, what, what's behind the, what's the motivation for something like that? What, what were you feeling when you did that? Well, well, I, it, it's, I, I was there to do a profile on, uh, on General McChrystal, and he, uh, and they had invited me to do it, and then I just reported what uh, I, uh, they said and, and I saw. Um, and I think... Well, you know, often the motivation is if, if you find instances where public officials are saying one thing in public and another thing in private, I think it's the duty of journalists to sort of point those instances out. You agree with that, Carl? Yeah, but I think let's start with the bottom line, what's in these disclosures so right. far. Right. There is not a story out of 400 that I've seen so far that would be page one stories, all of them great stories. Really? That absolutely. That uh, the New the York, fact? just a moment, right. the New York Times, Fox, CNN wouldn't plaster all over the place, give their reporters a raise if they got the story. <laughs> Uh, there are terrific stories in there. Usually you don't, you know, people write books about, about these kinds of things, how the State Department works on the inside. There is also a huge problem in the Internet age about the protection of information. Mm -hmm. We, meaning governments, corporations, newspapers, yeah. everybody have got to find a better way to secure information. There's always a war going on between those of us who want to get the information out and those who, who don't want it well, out. Bill, that tension is inherent. Bill Clinton says that WikiLeaks will cost lives, and then there are others who say that it's really just gossipy and not that... I, I that, haven't seen what anything is yet that, that would cost lives, but I think it is terrifically important that news organizations, and uh, WikiLeaks strags, uh, straddles a very unclear line here. I don't think it's really a news organization. I think it's a disclosure. It's a kind of guerrilla news organization. Uh -huh. okay. and, but uh, it's up to WikiLeaks first to go through that information and get names out. But I think that, that by giving it to the Times, Spiegel, those institutions are doing what they ought to do in the handling of this. But it can go elsewhere. I mean, it could get, be well, anywhere. It, it, Depends. Yeah, yeah. We don't know exactly who has what information uh -huh. at this point. But look, the it, disclosure of security, pardon me, Michael, of, of secret information always carries a risk. And, uh, and we have to be very careful about how we use that information. Okay, Michael, what did you want to say? I agree. And I think S Secretary of Gates came out yesterday and said, hey, basically, th this is not a big deal, which raises another question. Well, if these disclosures aren't a big deal, then why are we spending uh, so much time trying to classify all this secret information? Well, actually, uh, most of it's low classification information. Mm -hmm. right? But weren't you interested right. in the fact that the Arab world would like us to bomb the nuclear reactor in Iran? I mean, I thought that was fascinating. Uh, that's what I'm saying. There are great stories That's not in a, there. Page for a front this page is, story? That's my point. That's exactly what I said. It's a terrific story. There are lots of terrific stories in here. Yeah. And uh, sure, the State Department doesn't want that disclosed because right. it comes through there. Also, many of the things in these cables are the kind of things that uh, the Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs will himself or herself leak to reporters when it suits their interests. And what about this idea that uh, Assange would like to get Hillary Clinton fired? What about that? Well, well what he, he said, said she, he like, he's accusing her of espionage. 
I, what, what do you say to that, Michael? Well, I, I don't think Hillary Clinton should resign. I think, I think in general, she's, she's done a, a great job as a Secretary of State. I, I think what Assange was saying was that if, uh, she can, if, if you can pin the violation of treaties of, uh, against spying on her, especially spying at the UN, yeah. then she should step down. But this seemed to be an institutional issue that the State Department's been doing for a long time. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for a very interesting conversation. We'll be back after a short break. Thank you.